and welcome to your Tuesday One Show live on BBC One and our affair with Roman Kemp. And Alex Scott. Uh, now, you may have seen in the news that the UK has recorded temperatures of over 40 degrees for the first time since records began. And I know there's one thing thing about Brits, right? We love what? saying we're hotter than other places. Yeah. So here's your list. We're hotter than Jamaica, the Maldives and Barbados. Say what? Yes. <laughs> but I tell you what, tonight's show really is the hottest ticket in town because the one and only Ryan Gosling yeah. will be with us in a moment, fresh from the premiere of his brand new action film, The Grey Man. Oh, I'm not sure how fresh he'll feel being suited and booted in this heat, though. That's very yeah. tough. That's tough. Hey, look, coming up as well, we take an exclusive look inside a pop-up hospital in Ukraine. And I've got to say, it's certainly impressive to see what they've been able to put together. Yeah, it really is. But now, joining Ryan tonight, we have another Hollywood star here in the studio. He's the Oscar-winning director behind films including The Da Vinci Code, Apollo 13 and A Beautiful Mind. Please welcome Ron Howard and Ryan Gosling. Yes. Welcome to you <laughs> Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Wait, Ron, I'm going to concentrate on because you two haven't worked together, so could there be a collaboration on the cards? And Wait, if so, what Ryan would you like to see? An action or rom-com? Rom well, I, I, you know, I think I'm going for the, 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 the serious character study, Ryan. He's, okay. He's, he's, got, he's got those chops to offer, and we've talked about it from time to time. And my daughter, Bryce, sends a hello, by the way, Ryan, and says he's hello, the Ryan. sweetest, Hi, very sweetest guy. So are, are you the sweetest guy? <laughs> This is actually an intervention, Ron. So it's 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 why haven't we worked together? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm, I welcome this. I okay. welcome this. Can you make this happen, please. Exactly. Please, thank you. Exactly. I, hey, very uh, mutual. Ron, I mean, talking about your latest film as well, is it's it's obviously about a rescue mission that many will remember. Uh, it's the story of a football team who became trapped in a cave in Thailand, and we'll talk about it later on because. You, you are no stranger to directing real-life rescues. Yeah. Obviously, we, we all remember Apollo 13. Yeah. And there's a scene that we've got here that I just want to show you. And, and apparently, you went to some serious, rigorous training to film this. Oh. Oh, well, at this time, you know, CGI really didn't exist as an option. And uh, to try to do weightlessness on wires and so forth was just, uh, you know, it did not workable for all the work that we had to do. So we, we gained clearance from NASA to actually use this airplane that they call the Vomit Comet. It's a, it's, it tends to upset your stomach when you participate in this. But they, they fly parabolas over out over the Gulf of Mexico to train astronauts and run scientific experiments. And your weightless... In, during the course of the parabola, yeah. uh, you're weightless for about 23 seconds. And so we filmed all the wide shots for the movie. It was about, I don't know, I think we did over 100 uh, of, these, of these flights uh, and, uh, and, and, and filmed all the, all the master shots for, for the movie that way. It was oh, quite wow. an experience. And the, the director needed to be up there too. So it was a kind of an adventure in, for all of us. Incredible. I mean, Ryan, would you have gotten the vomit comet for Ron? For Ron. <laughs> for Ron. For Ron. No, you know, it's funny. It. We watch we watch this film so many times. I made a film called First Man, and uh, you know this this was such a, an important reference for us. This uh, this film and just studied those sequences. They're just in, they're just just incredible. And having tried to mimic them ourselves, I know how hard they are, and they just they look so effortless and. It's such an amazing film. Well, oh, well thank sad. you. So is First Man, by the way, as somebody who loves you know everything about space. I love this bromance that's going on here. And if you want to put a, a question to any of tonight's guests, I mean, who wouldn't, uh, then do remember to get in touch in all the usual ways. I will say this, Mum, please stop texting me about right asking now. Ryan Gosling questions. He's at work. He's at work. Right. <laughs> now, Ryan has been the leading man in the Oscar-winning La La Land and Blade Runner 2049 and was the Hollywood heartthrob in one of the most iconic romantic films of all time, The Notebook. Yeah, but now his latest film, The Grey Man, is out in some cinemas and all over Netflix from Friday. It's certainly one to keep your eye on. Just on the edge of your seat. I mean, take a look at this. You hurt? I mean, my ego's a little bruised. They have something they really want. What's your gut? It's gonna be my funeral you're going to next. You wanna make an omelet? You gotta kill some people. You must be Lloyd. What gave it away? The trash stash. It just, it leans Lloyd. Easy. Fantastic. I, I mean, Ryan, you play Six, a spy that doesn't want to be a spy. Um, and obviously you can see they're often fighting your nemesis, played 
by Chris Evans. But I hear that some of the fight scenes, when you were doing them, they didn't quite go to plan. Is that right? <clears throat> Are you talking about when I got hit in the mouth? Yes, yep. that one, yeah. <laughs> you know, acting is a great job. You get uh, health care. They drive you to work. You, you get free meals. <laughs> Every once in a while, you get hit in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Small price to pay. Yeah, very small price. <laughs> but there yeah. are there's so many and brilliant stunts. Did you try any out for yourself? <clears throat> I tried, and then a great stunt team went in and they did it better. You know, I was I was blown away. But I've never made a, a an action film before. I'd made movies that have action in them, but uh, I, I was just overwhelmed by how many people it takes to make a film like this how much craftsmanship, just the, the, the amount of people it takes to make a gray man, mm -hmm. uh, it takes a village. Amazing. Hey, well, look, I, I know that in the past, you've been able to keep stuff uh, from your films. You've been able to keep a motorbike and a car mm -hmm. from other movies. Did, did you manage to take anything from this one? I kept the tracksuit. It's, it's great for, uh, you know, for, for high stakes action and, and it's also good for chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Although that must be terrible if the postman comes over and he's just watched The Grey Man and he's like, oh my God, there's a spy. <laughs> it would be weird for him. Yeah, You're it would right. be very I, I weird. I didn't consider the postman yeah. when I took the, the tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're actually laughing if you kept anything from any of yours. Yeah, I've, uh, you know, I've got a small uh, a capsule from Apollo 13, a miniature one that we used to float down. I actually donated it to the uh, Academy Museum, so it's uh, oh, it's sitting there now. That is so cool. And and, and Ryan, we, we have to talk about, of course, the Barbie film, and it looks incredible. I, 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 my question is, did you ever think a photo of you in fluorescent rollerblades would become the biggest picture on the planet? <laughs> no. <I didn't>. <laughs> 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 We're just seeing it right now, though. Look at that. Not many people can pull that off. What did your wife, Eva, make of it? What does she think of the look? She's been very supportive. Uh, <laughs> she's supporting my, my Kennergy. She your turned Kennergy. Uh, the, 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 the... She started a hashtag, that's my Ken. Oh. Which I thought was... That was meant a lot to me. And, and Ryan, is there, is there anything that you're, you're allowed to tell us about the Barbie film just yet? You know, I can tell you that I think Grey Man would be Ken's favourite movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. I mean, we absolutely, you know, love some of the pictures. And, of course, the new uh, Doctor Who, Shooty Gatwa, oh, he's in it. Judy. We saw your T-shirt earlier on. What was, it, what was it like working with him? Shooty, I am such a big fan of Shooty's. He's the coolest. And him playing Doctor Who is, like, the most exciting thing that's happening right now. So um, I'm here for it. Oh, so good. Yeah. And, of course, uh, more big action films from you now that we've seen you in The Grey Man. What about Grey Man 2? Yeah, I really loved making action. Uh, it was, uh, you know, I always wanted to do this since I was a kid. It took a while to uh, find the right one. You know, working with the Russos is obviously, uh, you know, I, I couldn't have had a better team. And, uh, you know, it's after you've done it, it's hard. It's, it, 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 it's, it, it kind of beats standing around and talking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, Feels like you're not doing enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ron, genuinely, like, obviously going back to that question, if you were to cast Ryan in a film, you said you'd kind of want him serious, would you do him action? Oh, well, sure. But, I mean, I, Ryan has incredible range, and he's demonstrated that. You know, he makes a lot of, he, make, he takes a lot of chances, yeah. he's creative, he gets involved, and he's, and he's uh, you know, he's willing to go out there on a limb, and he always, he always delivers. So, uh, you know, it's a little embarrassing to say here uh, in, <laughs> in front of him on television. <laughs> Sorry. So glad he's, he he's one of those, he's one of those guys. You know, he's just, he's got all, all kinds of range. Yeah, I think we need to make this happen, don't uh, we? Definitely, right definitely, here. definitely. You guys need a piece of the action if we ever uh, sort this out. It's exactly. like a dating show for actors and directors. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that's, I think so. that's what we were trying to get at and also get the 20% out of it at the end. Um, and Ryan, I, I do just want to quickly ask as well, because obviously Ron's made so many incredible movies. If you could have been in one of Ron's movies of years gone by, which one would you have, which one would you have chosen? Willow. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow, okay. Very He's good. He's surprised at that. Well, uh, uh, you know, in there's his generation, many, Willow has a, a real standing and there's going to be a, a, new, a new series starring Warwick Davis and, a, and, a, and a, uh, for, about Willow and it's uh, for Disney Plus coming up. Amazing. Oh, well, look, cool. Ryan, yeah. thank you so much. I know you're a very busy man. Yeah. Uh, thank you thank so you. much. Thanks, Ryan. You and bet. Take care, Ryan. With the film. That was 
Very cool. Uh, still to come this evening, we're going to meet a real-life hero that Ron has teamed up for his latest film. Yeah, and more real-life heroes right now, because as the war in Ukraine continues, so do the devastating attacks on her hospitals and medical centres. Yeah, but a pop-up hospital is now being used as a way to continue vital treatment near the front line, and tonight we've been given exclusive access. The severe bombardment of some parts of Ukraine has led to important medical services being put out of use, which is why the charity UK Med, along with UK Aid, have initiated a new emergency surgical field hospital to be installed in its eastern region. NHS medical staff Angus Watson and Tricia McCready are preparing to travel to Ukraine, among the first to volunteer at this innovative new hospital. It's wanting to help those people, and I kind of hope if the, it was the, the other way around that they would, somebody would want to come and help and support me if I was in that situation. Everyone's aware of the humanitarian crisis that's there. There's a kind of sense of humanity that I feel that there is a population in need. Getting on the train to Manchester Airport to start my journey to the Ukraine. I'm at Terminal 3. It's about just after 5 o'clock in the morning. The area in Ukraine they're both travelling to was briefly occupied by Russian forces and there still remains an ever-present risk of attack. There's a siren going off, but uh, I'll just uh, close that down right now. OK, see you later. When Angus arrives at the damaged hospital the pop-up one is replacing, he's shocked at what he sees. There's some tank shells that have gone through several areas of the top two or three floors. You can see that. The holes in the wall, an area where the shell from the tank went through a metal cabinet. The relentless shelling of the hospital meant that patients had to be quickly moved to a safer space. When the hospital was under attack, the staff brought patients down uh, to this area. Indeed, um, two children were, were born down here. The new field hospital was set up next to the original hospital building, taking just 12 days to construct and is to be staffed by medical teams from the UK and Ukraine. So welcome to the field surgical unit. It's got an operating theatre, it's got a recovery area, um, it's got a 20 bedded ward, it's got an accident and emergency type capability. The unit is soon up and running, and one of Angus's first duties is to carry out a much-needed gallbladder operation for local resident Eugene. How's he feeling about having his operation today? Uh, he says like uh, he's afraid a little bit. Okay. But no, he's ready. And he hopes and he thinks that everything will be okay. Yeah. Angus is assisted by Ukrainian surgeons for the difficult but essential procedure. In the rural outskirts around the hospital, there's also a great need for medical services, which is why Trish is part of the team helping to run daily clinics in villages like this one. We've arrived at the clinic, I'm just setting up and then I'll just do some basic observations. And the patients she sees seem happy for the help. Thank you very much. <laughs> Having seen how the conflict disrupted healthcare, Trisha's work also means she hears firsthand some harrowing personal accounts. I heard some really sad stories from the villagers. When I was speaking to one woman, she started telling me during the shelling, the shell had hit the kitchen where her and her husband were sat at the table and he'd, I think, quite literally blown up in front of her. She'd known him for 55 years and they'd had three children together. And I suppose that's part of the job that we do is we offer psychological support but it was still quite difficult. We've just finished operating on the soldier who sustained a bullet wound through his lower leg and really smashing the bone. I've arrived at the field hospital, which is very good news. How did it go? Couldn't have gone better, so I'm delighted. Congratulations. After four weeks of hard work looking after patients, Trisha's time here has come to an end. It's been an amazing, interesting experience. It's also been sad in places, and it's a place I'd definitely come back to when the war is over and we're all at peace again.
Consultant Angus is staying on at the field hospital for a while, where the plan is to keep this service running for as long as needed. It's been an enormous privilege to be working with UK Med in Ukraine, and I'm confident that we've made a long-lasting difference to the lives of the patients and people. How Absolutely incredible. To get that equipment. It's amazing. Real life heroes. And, and, and Ron, you've actually made a film about some real life heroes, about the amazing cave rescue story from back in 2018. And uh, many of you will remember this. A group of heroic divers embarked on an epic mission uh, to save a football team and their coach from a flooded cave in Thailand. Yeah, it was a story that gripped the world and now it's been turned into a Hollywood film called 13 Lives. So let's take a quick look. Hey, Rick, you following what's happening in Thailand? Some kids stuck in a cave. Last seen nine days ago, 12 boys and their coach are trapped in the flooded cave. That's it, we better head back. Hello? Hey, they're here. How many of you? 13. 13? They're all alive. Uh, can we... Go out now. Oh, wow. look wow. at that gripping, right? And now we are joined by Rick Stanton, who was one of the first divers to find the team alongside John Tollerton. Um, just thinking about that, how does it feel reliving that story? This is a fantastic feel-good story, yeah. of course, apart from one sort of tragic set of circumstances. Mm. Um, so. I'm really happy to and really proud to to relive it and to tell it to others so other mm. people can see what actually happened. I mean, on the rescue days, in some ways, we made it look too easy. We would all go into the cave and four or five boys would come out. But nobody quite knows what was involved in that process. So really, I'm, I'm happy that people get to to feel the emotion and the drama of what what actually happened. Because that's the thing, you were reliving it and telling the actors about the emotions and actually what it felt like to be in, in part of it all. Sure. So they could feel it. Yes, so, you know, they, they um, engaged with the actors a lot mm -hmm. so they, they could uh, find, you know, get our tension points and what we were thinking and was it, re was it really going to happen? Yeah. You know, what would, did we think the chances are? How did we feel about that? It's incredible. It's, it's absolutely yeah. amazing. And, and Ron, you know, on this, this story, how do you make a story that is so gripping already? How do you elevate that? Well, it's the thing that you can do with a scripted narrative version of the story. You've got great actors, um, and, and not just the Western stars, Viggo Mortensen, Colin Farrell, and Joel yeah. Edgerton, but also a, a, a really a outstanding Thai cast yeah. of terrific actors. And they're bringing these moments to life in a very emotional way. And we were talking a little bit off the air, but you know, yeah. when you watch a movie like this, you know, a lot of the suspense is is sort of uh, connecting yourself, relating to what it feels like to, to be in that environment, to be making those tough decisions and living through all of that and the stress of it. And uh, so I, I always say that, you know, a movie like this uh, ought to not only engage your mind and heart, but also, you know, your nervous system. Yeah. And uh, the drama of this story lent itself to that opportunity from a, from a movie making standpoint. Yeah, and when you actually say it's, it's a great cast that everyone, it's one of those stories that everyone did want to be involved and a part of because yeah. it is so, you know, it's a special story, isn't it? Well, I mean, of course, there's the story of the, the divers and that's, that's, that's central. There's so much drama in that and it was exciting to be able to depict that. And Viggo Mortensen and Colin Farrell and Joel Edgerton, they wanted to be a part of that. And thankfully, uh, Rick and Jason Mallison were able to be there to coach him, to instruct. But, uh, but there's also, a, you know, a lot of different kinds of uh, versions of, of courage on display. A lot of risks being taken even away from that central when they're, you know, not so yeah. much physical, not so much about danger, but, um, you know, emotional risk, career risk. You know, it's, uh, it's very inspiring in that way. And what they all gave us ultimately is an object lesson in what is possible when on an international level, mm. people set aside their minor differences and concentrate on a goal that they can all agree upon and really get something remarkable done. Because that's the thing that's so special, isn't it? When you see it, the teamwork and the spirit shown of everyone working together. Sure, I mean, there was a huge, huge team, 5,000 people, and everyone was doing their bit. Mm -hmm. Moving cylinders, um, 
feeding us all. That's a huge army of people that yeah. needed feeding. And us, you know, I brought in a team of people that I knew personally, you know, for, for the actual diving rescue, people mm -hmm. that we'd worked with for many years. In fact, three, three people from the Thai rescue were actually on this show in 2010 because we'd done a world record dive. So we'd, mm -hmm. yeah. we, we, would, we do our hobby, which is cave diving, and sometimes because of the nature of the dives we do and you know, that we've made a name for ourselves by these uh, technical and complicated dives, we get called upon to do rescues and give something back yeah. um, from our, basically our hobby. Mm. But I feel like just in that <sighs> pressure situation for you, how calm you were and making the decisions that you were making. So, so wow. I'm very good at being blinkered and we were, there was a lot going on around the world. We were aware that the whole world was looking at that event Luckily, what we hadn't engaged with was how emotionally uh, involved and uh, it, everybody was with, yeah. with the plight of the boys. We knew they were looking, but we didn't know to the extent that they were. Yeah. I just yeah. want to underscore one thing that Rick just mentioned, you know, that, mm. that it's kind of their hobby. What was interesting to me about this story, you know, versus something like Apollo 13, mm -hmm. which is a story about professionals applying that thing that they do that's their duty, yeah. really. Mm -hmm. In this case, there was so much volunteerism, you know? I mean, these guys didn't have to be there. They, they you know, they were asked and they agreed to go. Yeah. And it's not the only example of that. There are thousands of people. We couldn't tell all the stories uh, and all the heroic steps and the sacrifices that were made, but we did try to uh, focus on a number of them in, yeah. in various aspects of it and, and underscore that because it's uh, remarkable how much they achieved and, and how willing they were to volunteer themselves. Yeah. It is so incredible. And honestly, thank you so much uh, to both of you for being here today. It, Rick, it's an honor for me to, to to, to meet you, you as well yeah. as Ron. Um, and don't forget, 13 Lives will be out in cinemas next Friday and you can also catch it on Prime Video from the 5th of August. Yeah, now from something very tense to a happy place because we all love our pets and you might be surprised to hear that over 70% of pet owners celebrate their dog's birthday, spending more than, wait for it, £125 million pounds on enough. gifts and treats for special occasions. Yeah. And whilst for some owners a birthday means a cake and a card, for an increasing number of others it's a full-blown party. Take a look. Ready here? Hat on. Today is a special day for Dylan as he turns six and he's in for one heck of a birthday party. Eilish has thought of everything for the birthday dog. In the car. Even spending days baking dog-friendly treats. And after lots of preparation, the day is finally here. Throwing a party is a way of sort of giving back to your dog all of the stuff they give you, you know, daily walks, socialisation, you know, all the fun, all the love, all the affection. It's hard to give that back to a dog. They don't speak to us. So this is a way of sort of showing how much they mean, I think. We're expecting up to like 30 dogs or so, give or take. Hopefully there'll be a lot of chaos. Yeah, we're hoping for a big turnout and lots of, uh, lots of shenanigans. We're just going to do a few more bits to set up, finalise a few things, and then we'll be welcoming all the guests. Dylan's dog friends and their owners have arrived and are ready to celebrate in style. Really good, really busy. Uh, venue's probably a tiny bit too small for how many people I think actually turned up. Every party needs great photos as a memento, and photographer Gavin Owen has been booked to capture Dylan's big day. Previously, all of the photography I did was of people, and once I started advertising for dog photography, the numbers grew up. 47% of the photos I sold were of dogs, and 53% of people, so it went from thinking it would be a sideline to being half my business. And there's definitely an uptake in people spending money on their dogs now, but I think there's a growing appreciation of what a dog does when it's integrated into your family. Dogs aren't self-conscious in front of a camera like people are, so there's a great joy where dogs are very natural when you photograph them. And I can honestly say that I have less trouble photographing dogs than human beings. With the party well underway, Dylan is ready for his cake. Happy birthday, dear Dylan. Happy birthday to you. And no six-year-old's birthday party would be complete without games. Eilish has spent hours making a piñata stuffed with food. So this is a sprat-filled fish piñata. Not forgetting musical statues. The aim of the game, we play the music, I stop, dog has to sit, last dog to sit is out. The dogs seem to be enjoying themselves, but what do the owners make of it? 
absolutely brilliant. A little bit mad, but a little bit lovely. If you're a dog owner, nothing's better than a dog party. Miss Bonnie and Grunty Pig are going to be having their own party. It's amazing. It's not something I do for my dog, but um, I'm happy to be here and, and yeah, take part. All the dogs had fun, lots and lots of food, lots of games. I think it went really well. Everyone came, had a great time. Full bellies. I think some of them are going to sleep well today. Oh, I love the fact that one of the greatest directors of all time, Ron Howard, was just loving that film. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've had a lot of great dogs. We've been lucky in our family. I don't know any of their birthdays. Yeah. Uh, so I, I can't imagine we'd throw a, a party. But then again, I've got a very good friend of mine who always says something that I believe in, which is never pass up on an opportunity to celebrate. So why not? Exactly. I like that. I like that, that. is what we I all need. I know how much you loved it. You oh, said my you God. Would. Well, <laughs> we've had a load of questions come in. A lot of love for Happy Days as well. Oh. Um, Garin said, has written in to say, I grew up watching Happy Days. It's so nice to see how successful Ron has been, from initially acting himself to eventually being on the other side of the camera. Well done and greetings from the Isle of Man. Very kind. A lot of oh, love. Thank Although, you. Stefan has asked, Will there ever be a Happy Days reunion? Well, we've had them in the past, and uh, uh, but uh, you know, and you you know, I, I would I would never say never. We might do it again. Ooh. We all stay very close. We're all Ooh. we're all pals. Say very good. Never say never. Well, thank you for being on. That's all we have time for tonight. Thanks to Ron, Rick, and Ryan. I know I'm not here tomorrow because I'm off for the Euro quarterfinals. Come on, England! Yes. But I'm leaving you in capable hands, of yeah. course. I'll be back tomorrow alongside Ronan Keating. That'll be confusing. We've got Chris Marshall <laughs> and Nikki will be in for Watchdog. See you then. See ya. Bye.